Who is a good candidate for trabectome? When should I consider it as an option? When is it not a good option? Want to know what you need to know about trabectome in who and when? That's what we're about to cover in this fourth and final trabectome video in the MIGS University series. Also, for those of you just tuning in who are interested in gaining some MIG success secrets on surgical steps, patient selection, and post-operative management, stay tuned to the end to get access to a free ebook. Hello, and welcome to the Eye Glaucoma YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Constance Okeke, creator of MIGS University. Today, I am super excited to share with you patient selection pearls for trabectome. I wrote a book called the Building Blocks of Trabectome Surgery, Patient Selection. So I'm ready and able to share with you some great excerpts and pearls from the book. So with that being said, let's dive in. So first up, who is a good candidate for trabectome? Well, this device is FDA approved to be performed either as a standalone option or in conjunction with cataract surgery. So you're gonna be looking for open angle glaucoma patients that are phagic, pseudophagic, or have a visually significant cataract. The ideal stage of glaucoma is early to moderate glaucoma, though this device can be performed in advanced stages of glaucoma, such as after trabeculectomy or tube shunt if the angle is amendable. In regards to medications, the patient should be either controlled or uncontrolled using one to three glaucoma medications. This is also a procedure that can be performed after other MIG surgery. When you, should you consider trabectome as a good option? The scenario of most ideal candidates is mild to moderate open angle glaucoma with a goal of 20 to 30% reduction of IOP from their baseline or reduction of one medication with maintenance of IOP. Are there specific characteristics where trabectome usage is a benefit? There are some clinical scenarios where trabectome seems to have favored success that I have found in my research of over 650 patients undergoing trabectome surgery. In my research, we demonstrated greater long-term success in patients who had trabectome combined with phacal emulsification, in pseudoxolation glaucoma patients, and in, and in Hispanic patients. In my experience, I have also found trabectome to be quite useful in narrow angle glaucoma patients with or without synechiae. If peripheral anterior synechiae is present, but not 360 degrees or really high PAS, works quite well to perform goniosynechiolysis. This can open up access to the trabecular meshwork and then the goniotomy procedure can be performed to aid in additional outflow. Another important question about whether a MIGS option is a good one is, will this be covered by the patient's insurance? Another advantage of trabectome is that it uses the 65820 CPT code, which is covered by the majority of insurances. This is a major real world advantage. When should you not consider trabectome? If on your clinical exam, you see on gonioscopy, very significant high synechial angle closure, especially in the nasal angle, this is likely not a good candidate. If you are faced with uncontrolled neovascular glaucoma with heavy 360 PAS, this should be a no-go. If you have severe corneal opacity and can barely see the angle structures, mm -mm, not going to happen. If the patient has elevated episcleral venous pressure as indicated by blood in Schlem's canal, this pathology cannot be treated with trabectome for risk of severe hyphema. If a patient is on chronic heavy blood thinners with excessive bruising on the skin, this patient may not be a good candidate for goniotomy because of the heavy intraocular bleeding that may be prolonged and difficult to resolve and then could lead to angle synechiae, which is a big risk. If you love what you see so far, go ahead and give me a thumbs up or comment with a shout out saying, love it. What about an actual case? I had a patient of mine who was a 75 year old female with pseudoxfoliation who presented with complaints of blurred vision. 
A year prior, her angles were noted to be narrow, and she had bilateral peripheral iridotomies that did widen her angles, but she still required topical treatment for eye pressure control. On exam, she had an eye pressure of 23 in both eyes, while on Timoptic XC 0.5% QAM with a target of 18. Her central corneal thickness was 551 in the right and 557 in the left. She had a visually significant cataract with best corrected visual acuity of 2040 in the right and 2030 in the left. She had a bat of 2100 in her right eye and 2150 in her left. Her fundus exam revealed a cuptus ratio of 0.6 in the right and 0.5 in the left. Her visual field showed an inferior arcuate with a superior nasal step in the right eye and a nasal defect that was likely rim artifact in a normal field in the left. Her OCT of the retinal nerve fiber layer showed borderline infratemporal and superior temporal thinning in both eyes. I decided to do a combined cataract mix procedure and signed her up for a cataract surgery with trabectome in both eyes. She did exceptionally well and was 2020 in her vision in both eyes best corrected postoperatively with an eye pressure of 11 off meds that extended up to four plus years after surgery. So do any of you watching think you have patients that could be good trabectome candidates? Click one or type one for yes. Click two or type two for no. Okay, did you stick with me the whole way? Awesome. Remember to check out the links below or card to get access to the first, second, and third videos on the what, where, why, and how of trabectome. If you are interested in learning more about trabectome or MIGS in general, if you're interested in improving outcomes, enhancing your approaches to patient selection, I invite you to check out my book, The Building Blocks of Trabectome Surgery, Patient Selection, which is jam-packed with my pearls, personal notes, steps to avoid, and action points to ease you in to adopting a new mix procedure. Many of the benefits in this book can be transferred across various mix procedures and is written in that format. I encourage you to check out the links below to get more information as well as special discounts in the description box below. Thanks for watching iGlaucoma YouTube channel, a place where glaucoma innovation is made easy for eye care professionals. Hey, so about that free gift, click on the link below in the description area for a free MIG Success Secrets ebook. MIG Success Secrets can help professionals and the eye familiarize themselves with MIGS procedures and devices. This ebook includes case studies, personal notes, and pearls of common errors and good practice. It will help you advocate for your glaucoma patients. So click on the link to get access right now. Thanks again.